All right, guys, I'm going to get started here. So my name is Rohit Agarwala. I'm a technical leader at the OpenStack Cisco team. Um, I was originally part of the core contributors uh, uh, three years back when we started the OpenStack project from Cisco. Uh, and Cisco got involved with OpenStack pretty early. And most of our contributions uh, were around the Neutron project initially, which is the OpenStack networking service. Uh, but we expanded to, to other areas of OpenStack. And as I introduce to you what OpenStack is, since most of you are not aware of, uh, you'll see how the number of uh, services in OpenStack is just growing tremendously. Uh, so our agenda in the next 30 minutes uh, will include um, an overview of OpenStack, what Neutron is, the OpenStack networking service. Uh, then we'll dive into specifically around uh, Cisco solutions that are integrated with the Neutron service. And, and, and just to give you an idea, uh, OpenStack itself has a reference implementation for networking and what is the value add that Cisco provides in, in providing networking for your tenants within OpenStack. And then we, if, hopefully we'll have time to actually demo something. Uh, and then uh, for developers, how they can get started with OpenStack using DevStack and finally how you can contribute back into the open source community uh, some of the tips and tools. Um, so OpenStack is, at a high level, a data center operating system to build your private and public clouds. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you here are aware of uh, VMware or Amazon or Rackspace. So they have a private and a public cloud. And OpenStack is your free open source implementation of those cloud versions. So you can, uh, there's a community that was formed about three years back. Uh, the most of the code was for compute, that is Nova, service within OpenStack contributed by NASA. Uh, Swift, which is the object storage service in OpenStack contributed by Rackspace. So that's how OpenStack got started. And one of the fundamental requirements for all of the services is to provide an API exposure to the tenants or to the applications that want to consume cloud. So as you can see in the picture, uh, the top level includes the REST API, and this is this is the most powerful aspect of OpenStack across all of the services that exist. So whether it be your application or your tenant, or the OpenStack dashboard, which gives you an admin panel as well as a tenant panel uh, to, to basically provision resources in your, in your OpenStack cloud. And these resources could be virtual compute, virtual network, virtual storage, or some of the other ecosystem services within OpenStack through the dashboard. From an architecture perspective, uh, one of the fundamental requirements was that it has to be multi-tenant. So a cloud without being able to service multiple tenants is not, not enough. So you need to have multi-tenancy baked into every OpenStack service. So when you talk about uh, Nova, which is the computer or the networking service, all of them have uh, multi-tenancy as a key aspect of, for provisioning uh, tenant networks or provisioning tenant compute on the infrastructure. Uh, also one of the fundamental requirements was to make sure that it's a shared nothing and distribute everything architecture. So all of these services that exist within OpenStack use REST APIs to communicate with, with each other. So that gives you an idea uh, that the, the only mechanism today that services communicate is through the REST API, not through uh, database configuration, which is not at all sec secure at times. From a progress perspective, uh, and this on the left side is all the list of services that are, that are currently in the integrated and incubated phase. And these are just different categories that OpenStack puts its services into. Uh, and, and what you see here is from, top to, uh, from bottom to top is, is the convention OpenStack follows uh, for the release naming. It comes out every six months. Uh, as you can see, the first release that was better in 2011 had just about 130 contributors with 30 new features across the two services. And last November, we had our OpenStack Summit in Paris. We had more than about 1,400 contributors across 133 companies. So the community has just exploded. And the number of services in, in, in the integrated as well as the incubated has expanded, not just being infrastructure service, but also uh, to allow for like Hadoop cluster provisioning. So Sahara uh, is an incubated project that allows you to provision Hadoop clusters within an, within an OpenStack environment. You can also use Sahara to provision uh, or to run jobs on the Hadoop clusters that have been provisioned. So then the scope of OpenStack services is expanding beyond just uh, infrastructure provisioning. 
Uh, now let's have a look at uh, the Neutron service, which is the OpenStax networking service. Uh, so this is the Neutron architecture. There's a lot of content here, so I'm going to try and uh, walk you through. So at the high level, like I said, every service has a REST API layer. So uh, there are core constructs in the, in the REST API layer, so like network, subnet, and ports. Uh, network is basically a layer two segment. So when you have a tenant that wants all of its virtual machines to be able to communicate with each other on a layer two segment, you would send a REST API request to the Neutron service to say, create a network for me. And that, under, uh, and that would basically provision the infrastructure appropriately to make sure that the tenants, when they come up on that network, have connectivity. Uh, there are other resource and attribute extensions. So the REST API layer is very extensible uh, with things like security groups that are very close to the virtual machine interface itself to provide security with provider extensions that allow you to connect your virtual machines to existing data centers. So these are extensions that are not necessarily supported by all plugins within, open, within Neutron, uh, but specific plugin implementations can basically uh, provide that feature through the extension mechanism. The next layer is the core plugin part that I, I was just talking about. So the service itself is very modular. So you have the REST API, which is vendor agnostic, but the core plugin provides you to hook into different infrastructure from different vendors. Uh, so the reference implementation includes something called ML2, which is a modular layer 2 plugin. And the mechanism drivers within the modular layer 2 plugin are the vendor pieces that basically communicate with either Cisco devices or controllers or open source devices as well. So here, example include like the Cisco Nexus mechanism driver. So this can communicate uh, with Cisco 3K, 5K, 6K, 7K, and the 9K in standalone mode. We also have the APIC uh, ML2 driver. So if you wanted to provision endpoint groups, so when you create a network within OpenStack, that would provision an endpoint group within APIC. So using the REST API, uh, within OpenStack, you can basically configure uh, the appropriate device in your infrastructure uh, for the resources that you provision within OpenStack. Type drivers within ML2, uh, you can think of them as, uh, as the underlying network technology that you would use to, to, to provision the network. So this could be VLAN, or it could be VXLAN or GRE. So again, VLAN versus overlays. Uh, based upon what are your requirements, whether it's a multi-tenant cloud that needs more than 4K tenants, then you might want to consider VXLAN. So these are all knobs that are present within the OpenStack environment for you to configure it to build, bring up the cloud. On the right, here you have service plugins. Uh, so it provides much more advanced services, including the core layer 2 and layer 3 services. So the advanced services include firewalling. And again, it provides REST APIs for you to define the firewall as the rules that would go inside that firewall and has a reference implementation as well as uh, vendor plugins, for, for instance, using uh, other devices, other vendor devices to implement that firewall rule onto your infrastructure. So between two different tenant networks, if you wanted to implement firewall policies, uh, such, that, such as that you don't want them to be routable, you could use the firewall service to do so. Uh, other advanced services include VPN as a service. So if you have a multi-site deployment and you want your tenants to be able to talk over an IPsec tunnel, you could do that. And, and one of the other services is Load Balancer, and which uses HA proxy. So, so you, you can have multiple instances of your applications running and expose a single virtual IP address within OpenStack using the REST API and it will load balance across all of your application instances. So building a multi-tier web application with all of these advanced services within Neutron, it's, it's, a, it's a very quick process for you to deploy within cloud. Uh, if you were doing that without OpenStack or using a traditional mechanism of, of provisioning that on physical infrastructure, it would take you days or weeks. And that's the advantage of using cloud and an open source tool, because this you can customize according to your requirements and build your uh, web tier application or three tier application according to your requirements. Uh, now I want to switch gears here and, and provide at a high level the logical model that Neutron follows to actually get an idea of what kind of tenant network you want to define and how that gets mapped onto the physical infrastructure. So on the left, like I was talking about, some of the core resources include networks, subnet, and ports. So when I create a tenant network for suppose a, a red, red tenant, it would create a, a logical, mod, it will create a logical construct uh, for that tenant network. Uh, 
Uh, similarly, for the blue network, I would create, and when I want to, uh, I would associate a subnet with those networks. And these could be an IPv4 CIDR block, or I, it could be an IPv6 prefix. Uh, from an IPv6 perspective, uh, there, are there is support for Slack, as, as well as DHCP v6 stateful and stateless. Uh, so there are options within OpenStack for you to associate the right subnet or the v6 prefix for your networks. Now, these are isolated subnets. These are isolated networks, uh, layer 2 networks. And if you want them to be able to communicate with each other because they are part of the same tenant, you would define a logical router with a neutron. And this is, again, a, a, a logical object that you define and attach your networks to the logical router. And once you do that from an implementation point of view, what happens is the default gateways for your networks or the subnets that you had assigned to your networks get configured onto the router interfaces so that they can communicate with each other. On the right is the physical implementation of this logical model. So here I have a network node, which is in OpenStack's reference implementation, uh, the switch that actually forwards and routes all of your traffic. Uh, the compute nodes are where the virtual machines get provisioned. Uh, the vSwitch is the hypervisor switch. It could be a Linux bridge switch, or it can be an open vSwitch, which is a popular choice as an open source uh, hypervisor switch that will tag the VLAN for the appropriate uh, tenant network with when the VM egresses traffic. The controller node is where all of the other OpenStack services run. So you have Nova, Keystone, which is the identity management service in OpenStack. And it exposes the REST API endpoint. So all you care from an external point of view is that the REST API endpoint should be, uh, should be accessible, and all of the other services should be shielded away from, from the outside. The network node, on the other hand, does if your cloud requires external connectivity, so you would require the network node to have uh, external network connectivity as well. Uh, the, the red circles and the blue circles on the V switch are the ports that get provisioned when you attach a VM to a particular network. So this would basically uh, install the necessary op open flow rules in case if you're using OVS, for instance, uh, to tag the packet that's coming out of that virtual machine with the right VLAN. Uh, on the network node, there is a namespace that is uh, marked. Uh, so namespace is a Linux utility that allows you to do something similar to VRFs that, that you're probably familiar on Cisco devices. So namespace is a Linux utility to have separate routing domains for your tenants. Uh, it uses IP tables to do SNAT and DNAT operations. So in case if your virtual machines need external connectivity or you want to be able to access your virtual machines from the external world, then you, you, then you, can, configure these, uh, then you can configure these NAT rules on the network node. What else? So there is a separate data network. So all of the VM to VM communication is going to happen on the data network. Uh, and also uh, the, um, the blue is there, there will be separate data networks for each of your tenants. Now, in case it, this is a multi-node deployment, uh, you would want to make sure that the switch that is connecting all of your compute nodes is also isolating the traffic. So that is one example that we'll see how the Nexus driver enables the creation of VLANs uh, for your tenants as we spin up virtual machines. So this is, uh, this is a high-level capture of uh, some of the highlights, uh, highlight features that came into the latest Juno release for OpenStack that was in November. Uh, so as you can see at the top is distributed virtual router. So this allows you to actually distribute all of the virtual func uh, routing functionality across all of your compute nodes. Uh, previously, it was all going through a single network node. Uh, so there were bottlenecks. And Cisco is also providing certain enhancements to allow hardware capabilities to do layer 3 routing. And, and I'll give you a summary of that. IPv6, I already mentioned some of the Slack and the DHCP v6 stateful and stateless. Uh, going forward, we are also supporting prefix delegations uh, for your tenant's network. So an admin can actually define a global unique address range that tenants can pick out and, and assign them to, to the tenant networks. Um, there are several other plugin vendors, like because it's being a modular architecture, uh, you can have multiple backends, and that community is complete, and other vendors are contributing towards uh, more vendors and devices, device plug-in drivers in, in Neutron. So this is the second, aspect, uh, the second part of my talk where, I talk where I'll discuss, based upon the purpose that you want to have, or suppose you have these equipments in your e environment, how do you integrate with OpenStack? Uh, so Open vSwitch is, uh, uh, is the open source available hypervisor switch. Uh, Nexus 1000V is Cisco's hypervisor switch, and we have an integration with that. 
similarly, we have uh, integration for the SRIOV. So if you have UCS 6120s uh, that, that have VMFX and uh, v, uh, VNTAC capabilities enabled, uh, you have a v mechanism driver to integrate that as well. Uh, the next is physical switch integration. Like I was saying, in a multi-node deployment, uh, you want to be able to configure the appropriate VLAN as well as configure the uh, compute ports with the, with the right VLANs, and we'll see that de demo in action as well. Layer 3, uh, apart from the open source uh, reference implementation option of using a network node or a distributed virtual router, uh, we provide Cloud Services Router 1000V, uh, which is an iOS XC-based implementation. So you can run that in your environment to provide uh, not only Layer 3 services, but some of the advanced uh, uh, advanced services that I discussed, such as, fire, such as uh, load balancing or uh, uh, firewalling or VPN uh, using the CSR 1000V. D DHCP, so uh, all, of your, uh, network, uh, all of your virtual machines that come within the network needs to be assigned an IP address. Uh, the reference implementation is using DNS mask. So again, DHCP has a pluggable, uh, pluggable um, deployment model, so you can have DNS mask hand out IP addresses to your virtual machines when they get attached to a network. Uh, but one of the fundamental problems with DNS mask implementation is that it needs to reboot every time a new virtual machine IP is assigned. So imagine reading through a text file that has thousands of IP addresses. And if in that between that interval you spin up another virtual machine, that, that, that entity will not get an IP address. So it's not a very scalable model. The open source reference implementation has issues uh, when, you, when you try to do that in a, in a very scalable environment. So we are integrating this with uh, PNR, which is Cisco's prime network registry, uh, to provide DHCP services within OpenStack. Uh, from a controller point of view, uh, Open Daylight is the open source uh, 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 Cisco contributor and with several other companies, so we have a mechanism driver for that as well. Uh, APIC uh, data center module, so we integrate that. So when you create a network uh, within OpenStack, it maps into an endpoint group within APIC. Uh, there are other services uh, in compute for Ironic, which is bare metal server, bare metal service provisioning. So we are integrating. Uh, how you can use the 6120 to actually provision bare metal servers using the Ironic REST APIs. Uh, we have done some more work around storage and doing a lot of work around Dockers and containers as well. So now I want to take a chance to go a little bit more deeper into the Cisco Nexus driver integration. Uh, so like I had said, uh, from an architecture point of view, on the top you have the REST API Neutron server. Uh, then you have the modular layer 2 plugin, which is the core reference implementation. And then we load the Cisco mechanism driver. So uh, this is where all the REST APIs from the top layer would get, uh, get, get processed. And then we use something called NetConf client. Uh, so this uses SSH to communicate uh, with the physical switches to provision the VLANs. Uh, we are also support, going to support VXLAN provisioning. So if your uh, tenant environments need more than 4K VLANs or just need VXLAN in your environment, you can offload that from the hypervisor switch to be able to configure VTAPs on the physical Nexus switches. So the trigger point uh, for configuring all this is when a virtual machine comes up. And this we'll see in the demo as well. So on the right side, on the compute node, when a virtual machine comes up by a REST API request through Nova, uh, a create port request is sent to Neutron by Nova. And this is the create port request for that virtual machine interface. So Neutron processes that uh, create port request and sends that to the loaded uh, mechanism driver, in which case, in this case, is, is the Nexus mechanism driver. And the Nexus mechanism driver then sends that request. Uh, first, it actually finds out on what compute node that virtual machine is coming up on. And then it has that information on the compute node interface that is connected uh, for that compute node. And it provisions that VLAN on, onto, that, uh, onto that compute node interface. And we'll see this in action uh, as, as in the demo. Uh, we are also working on uh, for the layer three configuration. So for for routing between two different tenant networks, we are we will be able to configure SVI interfaces, uh, which are switch virtual interfaces on the Nexus, uh, and assign the default gateway IP addresses for these two different networks and and make them uh, route between each other. This is a very quick uh, uh, walkthrough of how you can actually understand the code uh, because I'm assuming most of us are here here are developers or net ops, uh, network ops guys. So all of this code is, open so is in open source and is available on Git. Uh, if you go up there, um, there's a file called Nexus Network Driver. 
So this is the core of how uh, you will communicate with the, Nexus, uh, uh, with the Nexus device. And there are two main functions. And here I have highlighted the create VLAN function. Uh, so you pass in, so uh, I don't know if you can see, but maybe you can reference this in your, uh, in your slides later. But there is actually a XML driver snippet module in which you define the XML envelope that, is, that translates the command that you're going to be issuing on the, on the Nexus switch. So, so the Nexus driver basically calls that snippet in the XML envelope and is passed using netconf uh, to the Nexus uh, physical switch. I want to show this in demo and, and some, reference some of the uh, files that I'm talking here so, so we'll get an idea. So this is the Horizon dashboard. Let me log out here and log back in. So Horizon Dashboard is, is the graphical user interface in OpenStack. And I'm going to log in here using admin and password credentials. We'll quickly see what, what is the current uh, topology. So right now in hypervisors, within the admin tab, I can see I have one compute server that is running. I have a controller server that's running as well, and that's running all of the other OpenStack services. But this is Compute Server 2 is the only server that's running the Nova Compute. So when I spin up a virtual machine, it's going to land up on Compute Server 2. Uh, if I go into the Networks tab, I can see uh, there is only one private network created. So I'm going to spin up a virtual machine and attach to this private network. Uh, and if I click on this private network, I can see that it has a segmentation ID of 250 allocated to it. So this is, again, a configuration that I had previously set up. And it basically picked up the first available VLAN ID from that configuration that I had set. Um, I want to show the Nexus configurations. This is connected. On the right side is my Nexus 3K uh, login. So if I do a show VLAN, uh, I don't see any 250 VLAN configured. Also, the uh, interface that is connected to the compute server 02 is Ethernet 1 slash 3. And here, if I see the switch port trunk allowed VLAN is none. So when I spin up a virtual machine, uh, through the Horizon dashboard, you will see that the VLAN gets created as well as this, uh, this particular compute node interface on the Nexus switch gets provisioned with that appropriate VLAN. So let's go ahead and spin up a virtual machine. So I'll go to the uh, project tab. I'm in the demo tab, so that's my tenant environment now. Um, I'll go into the instances tab and launch an instance. I'll give it a name, VM1. Select an image. So this is a standard approach of selecting an image, specifying the right, uh, the right network that your virtual machine should be connected to. There are other options for providing security groups that are access uh, to your virtual machine, as well as advanced options for pa passing uh, any config data that you want uh, your virtual machine to have. So let's go ahead and spin up this virtual machine. And we'll give, just give it a, a a minute or so for this virtual machine to come up in a running stage. And hopefully, when I go here and I do a show VLAN, it, it should show uh, VLAN 250 configured. So here we can see that 250 got configured, and it has a VLAN name assigned to it. And if I do a show running config on 1 slash 3, uh, which is the interface that is connected, I see VLAN 250 got configured. Uh, so this, this gives you an idea about the programmability aspect that that Neutron or the OpenStack networking service can provide you. Just by using REST APIs, you, you are now able to configure your Nexus switch uh, with a specific tenant VLAN. Uh, this you can also do for VXLAN, but, but the idea here is to, to start adopting in a cloud environment uh, the use of APIs to control your network and, and basically uh, be, be much more agnostic to the physical infrastructure itself and use the APIs as much as possible. Um, I want to show a couple of configuration files here that, that I used. And this, this will be useful for you if you want to get started uh, with DevStack, which is my next, but, uh, next topic that I will discuss. But uh, here is the Neutron configuration file. So this is the core of where I am defining uh, what, what plugin I am running, what is my endpoint, how do I communicate with any other uh, service. So here is the Nova, Nova, which is the compute service. This is where I define that the plugin that I'm using is the core plugin is the ML2 plugin. Within ML2, uh, I have defined, uh, 
I have a specific configuration file for the ML2 plugin that captures the uh, Nexus and the uh, networking technology that I am using. So here I have defined for my tenant networks the VLAN that is I'm going to use for isolating. I'm using open V switch as my hypervisor switch uh, for tagging the VLANs. And in a multi-node deployment, I'll use the Cisco Nexus to provision the tenant VLANs. Uh, also, I'm providing uh, all of the configuration information for my Nexus switch. So here is the IP address, the management IP address that is uh, available uh, for Neutron to be able to communicate. And I'm providing the topology information here on which uh, compute node is connected to what physical interface on the Nexus switch. Uh, now I want to switch back and get and give you an idea of what DevStack is. If my slides move forward. So DevStack is, is something that you can quickly get started as a developer. Uh, it provides a very good environment for you to test something. Get It has different versions, actually, that you can install. It could be uh, all in a single virtual machine. So, so there, is, uh, there is information available for you to actually just pull in the code from DevStack and just with a single command have all of the OpenStack services running. Although that is also configurable, you can specify in a local RC file. Uh, the services that you want to run. So for a bare minimum cloud, OpenStack cloud, you could just say, I want to run Nova, Neutron, and Keystone, for example, and Glance, which is your Im image uh, service within OpenStack. So by just defining these four services and using DevStack in your single virtual machine, you can get started and also use the Horizon dashboard and the REST APIs, Python client, or the CLI to, 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 to spin up virtual machines in your environment. Um, like I said, most of the use cases where DevStack is used either for proof of, proof of concept or it is hev heavily used by developers to actually contribute back. Uh, it has a very good tight integration with Get It and Git, so you can you can basically develop in an environment using DevStack and contribute the fixes that or the features that you develop. Um, again, since a lot of the folks here are new to OpenStack and in general open source, uh, I, the the this slide contains pointers on how you can get started with OpenStack or start engaging with the community. Uh, there are IRC channels. The, like I said, the community has uh, uh, people across different regions. So anytime when you hop into one of the channels on IRC, you'll probably find somebody to answer a question uh, or, or if you have anything to ask. Uh, blueprints is a process through which you contribute f features. So uh, every release, a set of blueprints are identified by the community. Uh, that they're going to be working on, and it goes through a spec approval process. Uh, so you can all track that within the community using, using Garrett and GitHub. Uh, community engagement, like I said, uh, there is also ask.openstack.org. Uh, so that, is, uh, that has a bunch of information about how you can uh, tackle some of the common issues that are faced by a lot of the people who try and get started with OpenStack or deploy in their environments. Uh, so a good resource for you to come in. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to start contributing, uh, there are CLA requirements and, as well as individual, uh, individual agreement requirements. As a company, you should talk to somebody who, has, uh, who is engaging with the, with the OpenStack Foundation to make sure that your company has uh, an agreement signed, as, and as well as you are part of the foundation uh, by becoming an individual uh, member. Uh, so these are just admin things, but, but pointers for you to get started. Uh, that's all I had, but I'm more than happy to get, uh, you know, answer questions and also feedback on what would you want to uh, actually see more from an OpenStack perspective. We have a demo in, a world, in the World of Solutions uh, Center. We have an OpenStack demo of using ESR1K, uh, how you can do, do layer 3 routing. There were several other sessions during the week. Uh, so if you, if you search OpenStack keyword on Cisco Live 365, you'll, you'll find a bun bunch of information. My friend here is Shannon, who's sitting at the back. Uh, his session was a great head. He's, so I hi highly encourage you to go and look at that information if you are interested in more in OpenStack. Uh, any other questions? No? Thank you.